I saw this on the internet the other day and thought I'd order one. Uh, it wasn't very expensive, just uh, something to experiment with. It looks a lot like something else I've made a video on, which was an electric water meter. This, on the other hand, is actually a generator. Now, a lot of these things online, they, they make claims about how it'll power your house and all that. And these people, uh, they're a lot more, a lot more modest about their claims. Uh, they said it will uh, produce about 220 milliamps, about a quarter of an amp. Uh, and this one is the 12 volt model, which I think it says on the other side. Yeah, uh, it's the 12 volt model and they make them in different uh, voltage outputs. The, uh, they do claim up to 10 watts, but if you do the math, uh, 220 milliamps and 12 volts is more like three or four watts. But uh, I think the next step here before I tear it apart and see what's inside is to uh, take it outside, hook it up to the uh, garden hose. I've got about 18 meters of pressure on that. So that will give us uh, you know, a pretty fair uh, test of what it'll do. And we'll get some actual measurements from it. You can see the direction of travel. So yes, it's a single direction of travel for the water. Um, but outside of that, I think uh, it is time to do something real with it. Before we uh, take this outside and hook it up to water, I thought I'd test indoors, which turns out to be a good thing because the original jumpers I had, more of this imported garbage, both jumpers were bad. So yeah, anyway. Um, the other odd thing I found while testing this is this actually stores voltage. I don't know where it's storing it again when we tear it apart. We'll take a look inside, but I'm going to blow through here and just to see uh, what happens, see if we get any kind of honest reading so we don't waste our time setting it up uh, outdoors and then finding nothing. Okay, here we go. We got the voltage meter set up to DC. It's reading half a volt and decaying. And here we go. Three, two, one. So we got about 12 volts. Let's see if I can do a little bit better job on that. Okay, I'm not quite the blowhard I've been accused of being. Um, so we got uh, voltage. Now let's uh, change things a bit and see about amperage. I have uh, reset it to milliamps over here. I've given it a few trial runs, but I can't really give it a fair shake. I just can't maintain it uh, hard enough and long enough to, uh, to make it spin. So, but anyway, we'll, we'll do one for the camera and then again, we'll take her outside and see what real water will do. So yeah, I got a brief hit of about 36 milliamps, um, which, eh, okay, that's what, uh, one sixth of the way there, two of their claims. Uh, so let's, uh, let's do what I promised earlier, take her outside and hook her up to the garden hose and see what she'll do. I'll apologize for the, uh, for the sound already because we're outdoors. And it looks like we've got 12.3 volts. And okay, that should do it. Now let's switch to amperage. Okay. And hit it. Okay, on a dead short, it's looking like 108 milliamps. Okay, that looks good. This is a time to fill two and a half gallons. Ready? <laughs>
and stop. 5549. Let's take the data we just gathered from our experiment and that was uh, 9 point roughly 5 liters or 2.5 gallons in 55.49 seconds. Uh, that gives us a flow rate of about 9.5 liters uh, per 56 seconds, actually exactly that, uh, which gives us in cubic meters per second 0.00016899, etc., etc. And that's important because I used a uh, website to uh, calculate some other things from that information and they wanted cubic meters per second. Okay, we got uh, 108 milliamps at 12.3 volts and at 18 meters of water head, that's 25.6 PSI or about 1.8 bar. That has in theoretical potential, it has 0.0298 kilowatts of theoretical potential or 29.8 watts of theoretical potential. According to the seller, their specification said that it should produce 220 milliamps, and if we divide that by a thousand times 12 volts, that's 2.64 watts. Although in their literature they said it will light a 10 watt string of LEDs, maybe they mean like barely light it or something, I don't know. Uh, our actual, we got 108 milliamps, and again divided by a thousand to get amps. Uh, times 12.33 volts equals 1.33 watts. So we got almost exactly half of what they get. So yeah, maybe they're just using twice the water pressure that would do it. So let's look at some reality. To charge my telephone, my uh, handphone, it would uh, take 20, uh, 20 watts, uh, 1.5 hours and at 1.33 watts that would be about 17.73 hours um, to charge my phone, which is kind of absurd. Uh, so if we do the math here, that's roughly 2,660 gallons or 10,000 liters of water, 10 tons of water to charge my phone. So not terribly practical. Uh, if we calculate the efficiency, uh, E out, E in times 100%, uh, we do the math here, it's, uh, I just jump to the bottom, it's 4.4, 4.5% efficient. So yeah, um, you know, it's, it's not practical to, to charge a phone to say the least. It's time to dissect this thing. What have we got? Six screws and yeah, Phillips head. Try to keep my hand somewhat out of the way. Easier said than done. There we go. And that's the last one. I thought about getting one of those electric screwdrivers, but then I wouldn't get any exercise at all. So let's see if I got it. Not quite. Still got a few hanging on. It feels like, there we go. Oh, not quite what I thought. So, okay. I see why it was holding a little bit of charge. Um, make sure we got this. Yeah, it's in focus. Um, yeah, we're never going to get kilowatts of power out of here with this thin wire, but this is interesting. Um, let's keep taking it apart. I see. So the magnets are here. Yeah, and it is spinning around these coils uh, and then it's being rectified by these, uh, I'm guessing these are diodes, they're not marked. 
Um, so yeah, there's three wires. Um, and then capacitor, capacitor, and yeah, okay. And then nothing on the other side. Um, the uh, seal is just, <laughs> they just put an O-ring in here, which is, you know, O-ring is good. But then they just ran the wires by going across the uh, the O-ring. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, uh, and the case, well, nothing special about the case. Um, I mean, it's nicely made. Um, but, yeah, I'm uh, not sure what else to say about it. It's, uh, it's you know, the design is pretty good. Uh, I, they could definitely do a better job with the way the wires pass through the case. Um, and as we saw, it's not, uh, you know, it's not efficient. It's, uh, but, you know, if I were like teaching a class, you know, junior high school students, or I wanted to learn about uh, electricity or, you know, hydro generation, I would say that this is a very good uh, tool for that. Uh, you're never going to charge a cell phone practically or anything like that. But, you know, for teaching, for instruction, it's not bad at all. Yeah, probably worth the uh, six bucks I paid. Okay, well that was it for this uh, little uh, hydro generator. Hope you found that useful and interesting in your home hydroelectric generation projects.